Welcome to Firebase release notes for August. Now, I distilled all the updates from the past month down to eight topics for today. So let's dig in right away. You've always been able to use Firebase Cloud Messaging to deliver push notifications to native apps on iOS and iPadOS. But sending notifications to Safari on these platforms has only recently become possible when Apple added support for the web push standard to its mobile browsers. Showing notifications from Safari on mobile takes a few extra steps, like adding the app to your home screen and requesting permission. And one of our engineers wrote a blog post to walk you through all the details, and I linked it below. And Marina is going to record a separate deep dive video about the feature. So check the channel in the coming weeks for much more info. And speaking of Firebase Cloud Messaging, our SDK for Android changed the way that it initializes its broadcast receiver so that your code now has a better chance of handling messages that are received while the user is not actively using your app. The SDK now keeps the Firebase messaging service active for up to 20 seconds while your code handles the message. Upgrade to one version 32.2 or later for this change. We announced Generation 2 of Cloud Functions for Firebase last year, and we pre-announced Python support at Google I.O. Well, Gen 2 is now generally available, and Python support is now available in preview. This means that in addition to faster, more efficient functions, thanks to the concurrency controls in Cloud Run, you can now write your Cloud Functions in Python 2, as we can see here. And you can call libraries such as Pandas, and NumPy, and more. Gen 2 is based on EventArc, which means that you can trigger on almost any event source you can imagine, including new Firebase alerts, Firestore triggers, and even custom events that you define yourself. Best of all, you can run Gen 1 and Gen 2 functions side by side in the same file. So start using Gen 2 for your new functions right away. We also have some updates for Firestore, starting off with the fact that you can now use OR conditions in queries in C++ 2, starting with version 11.4 of our SDK for C++ developers. I expect that this change will come to our SDK for Unity developers soon too, but I haven't seen it land yet, so keep an eye out. About 18 months ago, we launched the Key Visualizer for Firestore, which visualizes traffic patterns across your keys to help you spot performance bottlenecks in your database usage. You typically want charts that look like almost random noise, as we see here, as that indicates a good distribution of data access. And you want to be on the lookout for straight lines, as we see them here, because those may indicate anti-patterns like sequential key access, or a block like we see here, which comes from a sudden change in load on the database. We just expanded the key visualizer so that it can also show index keys, like the values that we see here. This allows you to see patterns in index keys too, like this one, where the index contains a constantly increasing timestamp. Check the documentation for all the latest information on the key visualizer tool. And the final update for Firestore is in our documentation on how to run geo queries. You do that by using magical values called geo hashes that combine the latitude and the longitude into a single value that you can filter on. The documentation for geo queries now includes code samples for the modular API syntax of our JavaScript SDKs version 9 and up. If you're using remote config, you can personalize the app experience for each of your individual users. And you now have more control over the data that Remote Config stores, because you can delete personalizations using the Firebase console or the Remote Config REST API. And finally, you can now access Android devices that are available in Firebase Test Lab directly from within Android Studio. We announced this early access program at Google I.O., and it lets you connect to remote Android devices for iterative development and debugging. After your setup, you can deploy your app to a physical Android device, then stream the device's display back to your system and interact with the device all without leaving Android Studio. When you're done using the device, we securely wipe all the data before making it available to another developer. Check the documentation to learn more and to register for early access to this feature. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank, or Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.